Okay, we are back today. It's Maggie. Um, back today because it's about a week after I had the emergency surgery to get my right fallopian tube out. And this morning, I'm up bright and early because I gotta head to the fertility clinic. You're probably wondering why? Well, they still have to track my HCG down. I don't know how fast it goes down after surgery, but I assume it's faster than with methotrexate. And I also became quite anemic because I lost a decent amount of blood for my size and my hemoglobin was 9.1, I think. So I asked if they would be willing to recheck my blood counts and they said yes. So we're also getting that done today. I, I mean, I feel like you can probably tell I'm, I'm out of breath. I'm a little dizzy right when I stand. I still think it might be a little low, but hopefully it's just, I wanna know it's heading in the right direction. So we're gonna get on the road here. It was really difficult getting out of bed this morning. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I wanted to stay in bed. I wanted to sleep a while. I've been so tired, which I think it was probably to be expected. I just got cut open. My incision is obviously still there, uh, but I haven't taken the Steri strips off. I think today is the day that I'm supposed to do that. They're really stuck on there, so I'm a little nervous pulling them off. I don't know. We'll see how I feel later. Maybe I'll use some adhesive remover or something. Um, actually, I have to move this chair forward because the giant was the last one to drive. All right. Let's head for more blood work at the fertility clinic. Okay, all done. I just finished up. It takes, what, two seconds to go in there and get blood work and leave. Um, but of course my ostomy blows up, so I have to deal with that there. That's kind of annoying. It's just what it does early in the morning. Um, I'm debating whether I want to go to the grocery store or not because Zach got these wings, not wings, drumsticks on sale the other day and they were so good. And he asked if I felt up to it if I could go check the store, but I also know that the store restocks on Tuesdays. It's Thursday, so do we think there's going to be anything on sale today? I don't know, and I don't think he wants me to get them if they're not on sale. I have to see. How out of the way is it? I have to check. It's a little out of the way, but not terrible. I feel okay. Let's run to the store. Tell me why I parked so far away. Okay, we had a successful trip. I found a chicken that Zach really likes. Actually, it's just fairly cheap to begin with. So, um, got a couple packs of that. He can freeze it if he wants, or he can use it up if he wants. I got beet juice, because apparently I think it's high in iron and vitamin C. So I've been trying to drink that. I actually got it before because I read it's good for like, <laughs> uterine lining building, uh, but I had it, so I've been drinking it, and it's not that great. I don't really recommend it, but 
it's growing on me very slowly. And I got a couple of other things. Got some black cherry soda for Zach. Um, yeah. Okay, let's head home. I am exhausted. Get this stuff in the fridge when we get back and relax a little bit. And then I'm going to talk about all the stuff I'm doing. Um, what it's like a week later after this surgery. I am so much better than I was that first day home. I was completely miserable and um, that it, it's been a hard one. It's been a hard one. I probably because I didn't expect it to happen. I did, but I didn't expect it to be an open surgery. I thought they would be able to do it laparoscopically and I didn't know that I was going to rupture and it would be done as an emergency. So, uh, all right, well, we'll talk about it when we get back to the house. All right, made it home all safe. About to have some breakfast. This is a little like parfait cup that Zach's job, um, I guess, gave to him yesterday, and they had leftover. And they they are like the best. They have breakfast every morning for him when he goes into the office, which he doesn't every single day. But they had these guys, and they had leftovers, so they sent him home with them, and now I get to eat it. <laughs> that is hitting the spot right now. Wow. So. It has been a week since I had surgery. It's Thursday morning. I had it last Wednesday night. So what would that be? Is it today post-op day seven or eight? I think it's eight. And recovery is going well. It was really rough right after because it was just more pain than I expected. And they didn't send home very many pain medication or very, you know, enough pain medication to get me through the weekend so I had a bit of a meltdown the day that the earthquake happened here um, as you probably already saw I was so nervous that I would be in pain throughout the weekend um, so I wound up calling them and saying I'm really nervous to go through the weekend without enough pain medication they gave me eight pills um, and thankfully they gave me more for the weekend. Not like a ton, but enough that I could be comfortable. I don't think I should be totally miserable. Um, I get that I shouldn't have no pain. Um, that's not a realistic expectation, but I should be like, I should be comfortable. I should be able to sleep and that was not happening. So thankfully each day the pain has gotten less and less. It's sore right at the incision site it does feel like it's pulling a bit and there is some blood on my steri strips kind of old blood but it, it's there and so i'm just trying to be careful in the way that i move i will admit to you that yesterday it was beautiful out and i may have done some raking and some weeding just like the tiniest amount and i was super careful but i i've been getting a lot of comments saying like listen you just need to rest relax don't worry about videos don't do anything just relax and honestly I feel like that's all I've been doing for the last month plus because I was in such limbo my mind would not let me do anything I basically spent every single day staring at pregnancy tests and I felt paralyzed and so once things got settled and I had surgery and I knew exactly how things were going to work out, my mind is ready to move forward and do things. And it's a little bit of a struggle because I know I have to let my body heal and I, I'm still exhausted and I'm still hurting a little bit. Um, but I am ready to do things and honestly, editing the videos has been really helpful. <laughs> posting them online like I am so grateful for the support but selfishly I am putting these videos together because it helps me go through what happened think about it edit it post it and move forward that has been really nice and last night was the video that was the hardest to edit which was when we found out it was ectopic I battled in my head if I was going to share how upset I was um, I'm amazed that I even picked up a camera because normally I don't, normally I don't know where my camera is and when I am that upset I just sort of, I don't know, I just, I break down on my own, you know, I break down <laughs> wherever I am and I'm not thinking about anything else but, um, 
I'm kind of glad that I did record that. Edited it, posted it, and I will never watch that again. I, I don't think I can. So, we're moving forward. I am figuring out steps to mentally move forward as well as physically. Um, I am looking into therapy. I think it's it's a good, it would be a good thing to to do at this point. I think not just for the ectopic experience, but just, you know, I've, I've had a lot of battles in life and I've tried to manage them. Um, and I think that's the first thing I told Zach when I came out of surgery and I was in my room, I was like, I'm going to look into therapy. Um, I want better ways of coping where I can talk about stuff and not like get upset and cry and get choky. So that, and then the other thing I want to do is once I am healed, um, I would like to look into massage therapy to maybe, I don't know if it'll help with scar tissue, but hopefully it wouldn't hurt. Um, so that's something I want to look into. Oh, and let me, let me grab something real quick. Oh, yes, I'm still using a Halloween blanket. It's the one that I had washed and ready to go, and I, I keep pushing it against my stomach because that helps. But anyways, somebody messaged me on Instagram recommending these guys. It's the Frida Mom C-section silicone scar patches. So once I decide to take off those Seri strips, I'm going to put this on it because I just, I don't want my clothes rubbing on it. And I also want to, I want something on it. I just want something to protect it. Um, and it feels like so tight there. I don't know why. I wouldn't have expected that. I thought I had like a little extra skin, um, but it feels really tight. So I'm hoping this helps. It's supposed to keep it hydrated and stuff. So thank you to the person that recommended these. We'll see how they work out. Yeah, those those are the things that I'm um, looking to move forward with. It's It's been a wild few weeks, but um, I'm gonna finish my little parfait here. I will probably hear about my blood work, at least the HCG level I'll hear today, and then the CBC I'll probably hear um, tomorrow. But I'm gonna enjoy this and I'll check in a little bit later with you guys. All right, it's a little while later. I had some lunch um, and I did get the call from the fertility clinic. I didn't answer because they called earlier than they normally do, um, but my HCG is down to 25. So that is a considerable drop, which is a good thing. I know it's good. Anyways, um, because it's not under five, which they consider a negative pregnancy test, they're going to bring me back in a week on, I guess it's next Thursday. And I actually have another appointment. I have my post-op appointment that day. So we'll see. I won't get my blood count back until probably tomorrow, I would guess. So I got to wait on those results um, to see if my hemoglobin and all that is coming back to normal. Um, one of the things that I have been using is this guy, this Vitrin C. Um, I feel like somebody recommended this to me and this is my second bottle of it. I, I like it because it doesn't seem to bug my stomach too much and it's got the vitamin C in there to help the iron absorb. Yeah, I've been using this. I don't know if it's working. I still, I feel like I sound out of breath anytime I talk right now. It's <laughs> it's a little bit of a struggle. So I'll have to see, I'll have to see what my blood does tomorrow. Hopefully we're coming up at least a little bit from that low, uh, it was low hemoglobin, hematocrit, and something else. I don't remember. It got real wonky because I lost a decent amount of blood internally. And then I, I really struggled to quantify how much blood I lose during periods because I don't, I don't quite bleed normally. I don't, often bleed into a pad. Usually it's when I go to the bathroom just because of that pooling issue I have. So it was really hard trying to quantify for the ER doc. So I was like, I really don't know how much blood I lost, but I know it's, it's definitely a heavier flow than I would normally expect for a period. I still think, I still think I was on my period, which really, that really screwed with the whole situation. It felt like I was on my period. And then at the same time, I ruptured so I couldn't quite tell that I had ruptured because I I should have been bleeding but um, 
just very unfortunate timing but once the pain started I knew something was wrong I mean it was so sudden and so scary but we're on the healing side of it um, although a couple minutes ago I sneezed and I didn't I didn't think about it I just I felt like I had to sneeze and I sneezed and oh my god it felt like I ripped the middle of the incision open it hurt so much <laughs> I was who that was that was rough. Yeah. Anytime you get abdominal surgery, keep a, a firm pillow or a blanket wrapped over on itself nearby. So if you have to sneeze, you have to cough, you hold it against your belly, and it kind of helps with the pain. Um, I just I just wasn't even thinking. I was editing a video on my computer, and I had to sneeze, and so I just sneezed and. Yep, hurt myself pretty bad. So I think that I am going to delay taking off these stereo strips for another day, just in case. Not that I think they're doing a whole lot for me right now, but just in case. I don't know, man, this has been crazy, but I'm gonna check in with you guys tomorrow once I get my lab work done from LabCorp, because they have to send all the blood counts to a different lab. They don't do it in-house. I think they only do like fertility hormones and stuff like that. Um, so I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Okay, it is the next day and I'm just hanging out here with some flowers. I gotta show you. I just went out in the garden because my little flower area that I set up when we moved in has been growing the spring, you know, perennial flowers. So like tulips, hyacinths, daffodils, things like that. So I figured the bees could donate to me and let me have these flowers inside to bring me more joy. <laughs> Plus we, hopefully that wasn't a ghost. Hopefully um, the dandelions that we are allowing to grow everywhere is enough for them. There's a lot. So I, I don't think they're missing these guys. But yes, I wanted to go outside and just <laughs> cut some of my flowers that I love. Um, these tulips have been there for like seven years. Actually, pretty much everything has been there for seven years. So, oh my gosh, hyacinth, if you've never smelled it. I wish they made a perfume that smelled like this. It's very nice. So I wanted to make sure to get some of those. I think you can tell that I'm feeling pretty good today. I'll say this incision is one of the more painful ones. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. It is quite uncomfortable. And yesterday I actually resorted to taking a dish towel, folding it up, putting it in my high-waisted yoga pants to put pressure on it because it feels like I'm going to burst out of my body, like organs are going to fall out of me. So I don't think anything's wrong with it. I still don't want to take off the Steri strips because it's just sticking on there really well. I don't want to mess with it. so. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it for now. Maybe in a couple days I'll try to remove it. Um, but it just makes me nervous. If it's sticking on there well, I don't want to peel anything away. I know that I have um, dissolvable stitches as well underneath. So, okay, this is not the best looking bouquet, but it smells pretty good. I'll take it. I will take it. Um, yes, and I did get my blood work back and thankfully my hemoglobin is heading in the right direction. It's, I think it was 11.1 .1. and to be honest with you, I don't remember what my hematocrit was um, the morning I got discharged. I just, I don't remember it and now I can't get into that hospital's my chart system without calling, which is just annoying. I'm in the 11s now, which is not as high as I normally am. Um, there was a point in my life where I used to sit in the eights and that's when we did not know about my rectal stricture and I was barely eating. Um, I was getting weekly blood work to check it and nothing that they did was raising my hemoglobin. But now I sit at like higher 12s, lower 13s, which is absolutely fantastic. I still feel out of breath. I still feel a little dizzy when I stand up. So I. I don't know if that's more dehydration. I completely understand why it's been, it's been a rough couple of weeks here. It's been a little crazy on my body. So I'm not, you know, that's not totally unexpected. I don't think I need to call my GI doctor and, and make an appointment for fluids. I'm just trying to handle it at home with liquid IV and element and stuff like that. But um, that could be, that could be why I'm out of breath too and why I'm struggling when I stand up. But 
I don't know. I don't know. I'm just hoping it resolves on its own in a few days and just, you know, as long as I keep focused and do the things that I need to do, hopefully everything will just resolve. So I think I mentioned this yesterday, but next week I go in for another round of blood work um, just to see what my HCG is doing. It's at 25, so they want to see it under 5. That's what they consider a negative result. And then actually that same day I have my post-op appointment with the OBGYN who did the surgery. I'll be honest, I don't know who it is because there were a lot of doctors, a lot, a lot of doctors that I saw in the ER um, the day that I ruptured that ER trip. We met a lot of people. There were a lot of people coming in and out of the room, um, which was definitely, you could tell that they were taking me very seriously and they were worried. Um, and the fact that they rushed me into the OR within an hour of my ultrasound, I have never, I've never experienced anything like that. That was absolutely terrifying and I had an absolute meltdown being wheeled to the OR and in the OR um, and there were so many people around me. I was only awake for maybe two minutes. They just had me scoot over onto the OR table. Um, I was sobbing and I was like, I'm sorry, this is just really scary to me. <laughs> and uh, they knocked me out quick. <laughs> so, um, But I, I remember seeing just people everywhere in the OR room. It was the most hectic, feeling going under I've ever experienced uh, that yeah that was scary <laughs> I'm glad it's over I'm used to I'm used to scheduled surgeries now as an adult that's all I've had is everything's calm and collected and planned out I I have not had an emergency like that oh that was really scary <laughs> So, um, but I made it through. Life tries to knock me down and I just keep getting back up. Um, <laughs> glad it's over and I'm heading in the right direction. Um, and I gotta be honest with you, I have not thought even for five minutes about future fertility plans. I, I cannot right now. Um, I just, my focus is let's get this incision healed, let's get back to feeling like myself, let's um, get out in the garden and do the stuff that I enjoy and get back to work and things like that. Um, it's not, it's not fertility stuff because that just really scared the living daylights out of me which is very unfortunate to happen, the first round of fertility treatments. Um, and the doctors haven't even started discussing with me, which I'm really grateful, because I just don't want to right now. Um, so I, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. But anyways, doing well, one week post-op, heading in the right direction, got out in the garden, getting back to life and that's really all I can hope for in this moment so I just want to thank you guys for all of the support for checking in on me I know that I this is the most emotional I have been in videos ever um, I have dealt with crone stuff my entire life and I know how it goes and I'm educated in it and I've just never been this scared I've never had an experience like this and also it is losing a pregnancy that I, I had the tiniest bit of hope was like legitimate and viable. Um, so thanks for watching even with me crying. I know that can be annoying. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. But uh, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys very soon. Bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs> thanks for joining in. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you are looking for a way to help support my channel, consider liking this video or even subscribing. You can also check out my store at letstalkivd.shop. 
have stickers and hoodies like these guys over here just related to chronic illness and inflammatory bowel disease, something fun. And I also have a coupon code for my YouTube watchers. You could also become a member of my channel like the wonderful people scrolling on screen here. They've become a member and they have access to videos a little bit earlier. It's a great way to support my channel and really just watching my videos means the world. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next.